All right. Let me go back to. Oh, you know what? Before I even get on this, um, let me. Let me go to the. Oh, I keep getting that message. Let me go to the class because I've had to change things up. What? Hold on. All right. So I changed these dates on this um, Conover work. It's, you know what, it's really, I put dates on there, but just, you know, get it done by October. So, I mean, you've got time. I'm not, I'm not checking the, the, I'm not going in on these due dates and checking to see if it's done. So just get it done, but don't wait till the last minute. You don't want to be spending time on that instead of um, studying for like your last exam. All right. I took out one of the exams and I took out one of the quizzes. So we used to have four quizzes, four exams. I, I took out one of each. And um, I made the quizzes, well, I think I made them both a little, worth a little bit more. Like, so quizzes are worth 10 points each instead of before they were worth, I don't, I don't remember what they were worth before, but it wasn't 10, right? So, um, and then this is the, so we got four weeks left. Um, I know it feels like we just started and we kind of did. And I took out some material too. so. This week we're gonna finish, we're gonna go over macromolecules again. So that's carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, nucleic acids. I don't remember how far we got, but we're gonna go over it again. Um, <clears throat> then we're gonna go into metabolism, you know, how our body uses energy. And then, then we start going into the cell and the cell is actually, um, biology. It's actually the first living thing that we've talked about. We might start the cell this week, right? This is the order of things I'm going to talk about. It just kind of depends. If we get through them fast, I'll, um, I'll just keep going. Um, otherwise, um, otherwise we'll keep at least at this, um, in this order. So I, there was some chapters on plants i removed those there was a chapter at the end here on on cardiovascular system and respiratory systems i removed those maybe we'll have time to do it but like i'm not rushing to do that so we've taken one quiz and one exam so far so we're going to do, we're going to keep going and do quiz two on Wednesday, but quiz two is only going to be on one chapter. And so that's going to be um, macromolecules. So I guess I'm just going to go over the whole thing again today. So we're just going to make it on one chapter. I am going to go in, you know, what I didn't do yet is that I didn't go into the modules and change stuff. So Yeah, let me just, you know what, I, while I'm on with you, I'm going to, I'm going to change things. So I don't want anyone to study for stuff they don't need to study. I don't need to do that. Here we go. All right. All right, let me do a student view. Okay, so this is the video. I'm making sure it's a video. Yeah, that's a video of this chapter, which I'm also going to go over. And um, 
this is just a power, I mean, a, um, a PDF file of the same material, right? So that is, um, that is it. That's what we're going to study for this. Um, oh, I don't know. Look at you trying to get me to shut up already. I just started talking. Um, I don't know, early, I guess. Um, what is it, nine now? So maybe I'll go, I'll, I'll go an hour and a half and then I'll probably end. Metabolism's not super long, really. So it's, it's me going over some old material. Then I'm gonna talk about metabolism. That's it for today. Okay. I just schedule work on on a class day. All right. I'm just kidding. I know. I know. It you're wise though. You understand that that the man runs everything. Look, I'm here in the classroom. That's because of the man. I didn't have to drive here. Could have just opened my laptop in my bed. <clears throat> um, I had to get out, though. I had to get out of the house. Okay. All right, so that's, that's the, um, yeah, that's what you're going to see. So you just study this. Come to class on Wednesday. Um, I know a bunch of you're going to have questions already. Well, do I have to come to class? We got to try to like, we got to try to get some semblance of normalcy. So, um, yeah, we're, we're going to go back to where we were. So coming, coming to class on Wednesday, Monday is, uh, virtual. And it doesn't seem like there's too much damage around here. That gazebo in like the front of the campus, that thing's that thing's down completely. Um, that was the only major thing I saw driving in. Um, buildings look okay. Unfortunately for you, <laughs> buildings look okay. Um, all right, let me get back to the PowerPoint. Okay, PowerPoint. We were talking about uh, blah, blah, not none of this. Four different, um, there were four different macromolecules, four different molecules that make up our body. Carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, nucleic acids. So you're going to probably hear me say that carbs, lipids, proteins, carbs, lipids, proteins. I keep talking about it. Good. I just want those words to stick in your head. So three Three types of carbohydrates, monosaccharide, disaccharide, polysaccharide. Saccharide, see like this word up on top here? Let me make this full screen. A little afraid to, all right, there we go. Saccharide just means like sugar. Mono means one, so it's a single molecule. And again, I'm not going to ask you what the molecules, like I'm not going to ask you to draw a molecule, but I just wanted you to know they're always in CH2O, 1CH2O1, 1. 1 to 2 to 1, right? So here it's six carbons. So if you just count down here, it's six, 12 hydrogens. If you counted the hydrogens, it would be 12, and then there's six oxygens. It's a 1 to 2 to 1 ratio. Um, the ones that most, mostly we deal with these, C6H12O6. You might see that in the future, C6H12O6, right? You're not going to see other ones. You'll probably see that one. And that just means they're probably referring to glucose, which is like blood sugar. Sometimes it's called dextrose, by the way. Glucose, dextrose. Um, so three monosaccharides. Glucose, fructose, galactose. You know the word glucose, you've heard it before. You know the word fructose because you've heard high fructose corn syrup. 
and lactose galactose is just the word lactose with a ga in front of it so you should be able to remember those three so if i ask what are the three monosaccharides you should be able to write them out right and then if i put if i take a glucose and i add another one of these to it it's going to make a disaccharide for example glucose plus galactose that's going to form lactose you know milk sugar so that's i'm putting two molecules together i'm putting glucose and galactose i'm sticking them together that's why it's called a disaccharide di meaning two so glucose and galactose that's going to make lactose I could take a glucose and I can add it to another glucose. I can take two glucose molecules and stick them together and make a molecule of maltose. By the way, when I put two molecules or five molecules or 10 molecules, that process is called, say it to yourself loudly so your whole house can hear, dehydration. Yes, two of you, you were right. If you said hydrolysis, you're wrong. Dehydration joins these molecules together. If I wanna put these two together, dehydration, right? I'm gonna lose an OH from one side from one molecule. I'm gonna lose an H from the other molecule. See, that's H2O, All right? So I lose water. That thing's gonna go away and the two molecules are gonna to slide together. So glucose plus galactose, Lactose, glucose plus glucose, maltose, glucose plus fructose, sucrose, uh, table sugar. Yeah, or I could have just done this. This is the same thing. Like you see this here, how it's like in a ring form. That's the same as this right here. So this is the ring that's been like cut and flattened out, right? I hate dealing with these ring forms so but it's showing you well it's showing you a couple of things look here's the h from one side here's an oh from the other side h2o is lost put these two together that's dehydration put these two together <coughs> you've made maltose and the opposite of dehydration hydrolysis hydrolysis so anyway glucose plus glucose maltose glucose plus fructose, sucrose. And you notice how they're all ending in OSE, right? So sucrose is table sugar. And then we talked about, so these, these uh, hexagon looking things are supposed to represent like glucose molecules, right? So if we take a hundred or thousands of glucose molecules and put them together, then we end up with, um, a polysaccharide poly meaning many right so these are not simple sugars these don't taste sweet starch is starch right it's like a potato right so um i mean that's what the potato is the plant made um glucose like the leaves of a potato plant make glucose sends that glucose down to the potato part and stores it as starch right so in plants we call it starch or amylose, whatever you want to call it, either one. In animals, including humans, we call it glycogen. So glycogen is how we store our carbohydrates. Starch is how plants store their carbohydrates. So we make glycogen all day. We store it. And then we break it up all day and use it. And then the other, the third type of um, of uh, sugar, not sugar, carbohydrate, is um, cellulose, which is fiber, right? And and the plant. Let me. Just, I don't have a better picture. Plants. Um, we were looking at for those of you in lab when we were looking under microscopes. We we're supposed to be looking at uh, like bricks. You know, like those rectangles all next to each other. Those that that was the plant wall. 
that was all cellulose that you were looking at uh, in the microscope, all right? So plants, because they don't have a skeleton, they use, they have cell walls. Our cells don't have cell walls. Plants have cell walls. And so they, uh, they make it out of cellulose, AKA fiber. And um, that, that's what gives them strength, right? So if you're, uh, you know, the wood that's used to make your house, that's cellulose, you know, so your house is made out of a carbohydrate. Then we move to lipids. And we talked about two types of lipids. Um, there's three, but we only talked about two. We talked about, instead of using this word, we called it a triglyceride, because that's what this is, right? So there's triglycerides and there's phospholipids. So there's two main types of uh, lipid that we discussed in class. So triglyceride is one, and this is a triglyceride. This is a fatty acid chain. So there's three of them, and then there's a molecule here of glycerol. So triglyceride, tri meaning three fatty acid chains. The word glyceride comes from glycerol. See right here. And then we talked about there's two types of fatty acid chains, saturated and unsaturated. This one here, this is all saturated. And how do I know it's all saturated? I don't see any spaces here. If it was unsaturated, there would be a hole, right? There would be two of these hydrogens missing somewhere. And I don't see any missing here. So there'd be a double bonded carbon here, carbon, double bond carbon. And then because of that, two hydrogens would be missing. But I'm not seeing that. So I know that this, whatever this is, comes from an animal. What's the second type of lipid? Phospholipid. So we're gonna do that one next. So this one is just a triglyceride and there's two types of triglycerides, saturated, and that's what you're looking at here, and then unsaturated. And so here's the differences between saturated and unsaturated, right? Unsaturated have this double bond, like carbon with, actually, you know what? I'm going to write on the board for a few minutes. Carbon with a double bonded carbon. No. Yes. Stop presenting for a second. All right. Y'all can see the board? That means yes. Yes. This I'm just like this is just like FYI type of stuff. Well, some of it's not. Let me write bigger. All right, imagine that I make this really long. Here I'm only making it four carbons long, but I'm gonna make it five carbons long. No, six. Okay. This is saturated because there is a hydrogen everywhere I can have a hydrogen. Right? But just imagine it being longer, right? But an unsaturated fat, and let me make my, um, we put my carboxyl over here. There, all right. So when I look at this, I call this end, this is a carboxyl group, so I call this the carboxyl end. And then this end down here, it doesn't really have anything on it. So I just call it the methyl end. We call that a methyl end. So if I just want to tell you, instead of saying, oh, look at the left side, look at the right side, I'll say like, look at the carboxyl end, look at the methyl end. But anyway, I'm going to put a double bond here. That's going to make it unsaturated, that double bond. Because I have this, I have to, you're going to have no hydrogens there. Because remember, carbon makes four bonds, one, two, three, four no hydrogen. This is unsaturated. There's like this 
opening here, oxygen can come in here and like break this thing apart. Right. And um, so that's like the big difference, right? And mostly you find unsaturated in plants, for the most part, plants. And um, and it's it's oil. It's like a it's a it's liquid at room temperature. And so if you think about all the plant oils you cook with, they're always liquid at room temperature. If you think about things that come from animals, you know, butter and bacon fat and stuff like that, at room temperature it solidifies, right? That's a saturated fat. And by the way, this is I'm not going to test you on this part that I'm going to tell you now, but if you've heard of like omega-3, what you do is you like you count. Actually, I got this a little bit off, so it's kind of bugging me because it's not accurate. But you count in, you go to the methyl end. See, another way I can call this is this is alpha and this is omega. This is the beginning and that's the end of it. So this is the alpha end of the molecule. This is the omega end. The methyl end is the omega end. So I count in one, two, three. There's my double bond. That's all that it means. So that's like an omega-3 fatty acid. You just count in three carbons. There's your opening. That's omega-3. And omega-6, I would keep going. Four or five. I would get to the... I made it short here, right? But imagine this thing was like 18 carbons long, right? So that's why they call it omega-3, omega-6. A trans fat, which is like a creation, it's like a lab creation, it looks like this. Like, when they were both on the same side, we call it cis, just like you guys learn in all your trainings. Uh, but cis and trans is really like a biology. We've been using it for years. Um, this is trans, right? The hydrogens are on opposite sides instead of being cis, instead of being on the same side, right? So this is a trans fat. That's what a trans fat looks like. It's not supposed to be like that, right? So. It, and they're pretty much banned now anyway. And then a hydrogenated fat, so like a butter, not butter, margarine. I can't believe it's not butter. Um, this is an unsaturated fat, right? And somehow they figured out how to get hydrogens in there anyway. And I don't know how they did it. That's a chemistry thing, right? But that's a hydrogenated fat. Right, so like I can't believe it's not butter. It comes from like soy, from like a plant, right? But it's not oil. It's it's solid. So like, what's the deal with that? It's a, like how's it a plant, but how's it still solid? Because it's a hydrogenated fat. So they somehow figured out how to get hydrogens in that space. But what you guys need to know is. Um, The difference is between saturated and unsaturated fats. I'm going to go back to sharing my screen. Somehow. So this is the part that you need to know. Like, saturated fats for the most part, come from animals. They uh, are solid at room temperature. Unsaturated fats, for the most part, come from plants. They're liquid at room temperature. And there's that double covalent bond in there. And there's like an opening. Oh, and the other thing that I didn't draw on the board, but you know, the, the molecule kind of kinks right at that place. So anyway. I want you to know the differences between a saturated and an unsaturated fat. For Wednesday, I want you to know that. This is a phospholipid. Um, you could ignore this top part, the choline right now. Ignore that. Let's just look at this. Glycerol. Fatty acid chain, they're just, they're, it's, it's like this uh, zip thing, right? But 
See this yellow part here? That means the same as this yellow here. See, there's glycerol. There's glycerol. They just drew it different, right? You don't need to like know what glycerol looks like. It's just this thing called glycerol. Here's one fatty acid chain. Here's another one. Notice how this one's bent and notice how there's like that double thing there. That's just meaning it's unsaturated, but whatever. That's not the point. Two fatty acid chains attached to glycerol. The third one's missing. Instead, you have a phosphate group right here. So it's like, it's like instead of being three of these, we remove this bottom one here, just take this one out, and we put like a phosphate right here. That's what this is. So two fatty acid chains and a phosphate group. And then we introduce those terms, hydrophilic and hydrophobic, right? So hydrophilic likes water, hydrophobic doesn't like water. And um, that's what the deal is with phospholipids. They, they, they like water and they don't like water. And this is what your cell membrane looks like. It's two layers of phospholipids. And here's the heads of each layer that they like water. So this is like outside of your cell. And this down here is inside of your cell. And so the tails that don't like water, they turn in on each other. Um, this is like, you know, I could put a piece of fat in here and maybe transport this through the blood. Because your blood's water soluble, right? So you can't take something that's like fat and, you know, like oil. I can't take oil and just put it into blood because blood's water soluble, right? So the water and oil don't mix, right? So I can put it in here and this is all facing the blood. And this in the middle would be the fat or lipid or whatever I'm trying to transport through my body. But I want you to know that phospholipids are two fatty acid chains. You know, they're, they're, they're like triglycerides, but they're two fatty acid chains and a phosphate group. The phosphate likes water. Fatty acid chains like um, lipids. And so that's it with uh, – that's it because we're going to start – next week we're going to talk about cells and cell membranes and then you'll see these phospholipids again. I want you to know, I would like you to know at least like five different functions of proteins in your body. I don't care what five, but there's, here are some examples here, and I believe they are the ones I also wrote on the board. But, um, you know, aside from muscle – and hair and fingernails, they are everything in your body, right? Proteins are super diverse. So they there are hormones like like insulin and a bunch of other hormones. There are hormones, the antibodies that you create because of the COVID vaccine, it's uh it's there there are proteins antibodies are proteins lots of vaccines you receive are proteins um enzymes are proteins we're going to talk about that later today enzymes are proteins the color of your skin is protein the way if your hair has some curl to it that's because of proteins collagen like that's collagen um the elastic in your skin the melanin in your skin, it's all proteins, right? Um, the foundation of my bones. You, know, my, you can go on and on, you know, receptors. There's lots of, you know, I, I think like, you know, proteins out of these four things, carbs, lipids, proteins, nucleic acids, proteins are like the most diverse and they're the most, they're the, the largest explanation for, why you're going to get a disease or not going to get a disease, why you are tall or short or 
whatever it is about you that makes you you, it's because of protein. And they're all made from nucleic acid, not nucle uh, amino acids. Let me see if I can find a better one. Nope, can't. Um, they're all made from amino acids. So, um, you know, you take like, I think it, I was using the example of a chain with links. The link is an amino acid. The chain is the protein. So when you take a bunch of amino acids and you link them together, that makes a protein. When you eat like a hamburger, your body is going to take the hamburger meat and right in your stomach, you start to break that hamburger meat up already, right? And the goal is for your body is to break that hamburger meat up into amino acids, right? So the hamburger you're eating is like a bunch of chains and you want to break up those chains into the links. So that's what your body's doing when it's digesting a steak or something like that. It's, it's taking all the links off of the chain and then it's going to re form the chain with those links, like with, in a different order, right? So it's like, it's recycled, you know, um, proteins that we eat are recycled and they're made into things that our body can use. The, the order of amino acids, whatever you're making. So if you're making a, a protein for hair color, that protein has to be the right order of amino acids. So when you're putting those links together, they've got to be in the right order, right? There's 20 different amino acids. There's 20 different ones and you got to put them in the right order, right? So, um, so the order is very important. And they're, they're giving you an example here of sickle cell anemia. These are regular blood cells. They're called like biconcave. They're, they're round, right? They're round. They're not quite donuts. That hole is not going all the way through. But um, you don't want them looking like this because those aren't good at carrying oxygen. And I think we looked at a couple of these in class. I had a couple of these slides going around. This is pretty dramatic, right? But some of them look like this, right? And and they don't, um, they're not good at carrying oxygen. They get stuck in your capillaries. They cause a traffic jam. That hurts. It was because the protein that's responsible for the shape, like the shape, making the shape is about 500. I think it's like, I don't know exactly, 535 amino acids long. Just number six got changed. One, just one amino acid is different out of more than 500. That's enough to change the shape. So the order of amino acids has to be exact. The shape of the protein has to be exact. So two things have to be um, dead on with a protein. The order of amino acids and the shape of the protein. So proteins often, most of the time, look like this. And I mean, what kind of shape is that? It's just some funky shape, right? Really complex. If I take just this piece here at the end and I just move it a little bit to the left, it won't work. This protein won't do whatever it is it's supposed to do. If I take this loop here and I just twist it a little bit, it's not going to work. It's like a key. You know, if you just change the teeth on your key, just one of them, a little bit, it doesn't unlock the door anymore. So protein's got to have an exact shape. At least most of them do. So proteins have different shapes. And um, one shape is just called a primary structure. So just imagine I hold this chain. Like I take a chain and I just hold it. That's it. It's got, this one has no shape. But the secondary, it does have a shape. See, it's either, it's either coiled up or it looks like a sheet of paper that's been like folded and there's like those crease marks in it. Look what's holding them together. See all these three dots? 
I got three dots, three dots, three dots, and there's an H, there's a hydrogen and an oxygen. So it's some kind of bond between a hydrogen and an oxygen. Um, so those are going to be um, hydrogen bonds. Well, it's listed right there, isn't it? <laughs> I do that all the time. <laughs> There's like words on this slide, or I'll explain something, and it's like right on the next slide. I just had to hit my space bar. So yeah, I mean, these can break sometimes. Like the hydrogen bonds can break. And then the whole shape unravels, and then the protein's no good. We have a we're gonna do a lab on that. Maybe uh, not this, maybe this Wednesday, but next Wednesday for sure. Um, where's tertiary? Anyway, wait. I think I've got a slot. Yep. See. Okay. Look. There you go. Primary. No shape really. These stand for the, um, you don't have to know what the amino acids are, but that's what these mean, like glycine and valine. So, um, so primary, secondary, secondary looks like a coil. Tertiary is all 3D. I mean, that's the best way to put it. And then quaternary, um, it's just a big blob. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm probably not going to ask, you know, this is not like a, a major thing that you have to know. So I'm probably, probably not going to ask you the different protein structures on a test. I want you to know that they got to have whatever shape they are. They can't, you can't change that shape. Otherwise, we call it denature. You're changing its nature. So it doesn't work anymore. All right, last one of, of macromolecules, right? Um, nucleic acids. Nucleic acids is DNA and RNA. Let me take another look. Well, you know what? Let's, let's talk about this slide for a second. Okay, let's talk about DNA. So your body, your body is, you are who you are because of proteins and you might think to yourself well no i am because i am i am how i am <laughs> because of uh my dna my genetics that's what made me tall or short or whatever it's because of my genes it's not because of proteins those are like both both of us are correct your genes made you who you are but that's because your genes determine what kind of proteins you're going to make right so remember when you make a protein you got to have like the right order of amino acids you got to take those links and put them in the right order to make the chain right so that's how do how does your body know what to make like what order to do it that's all in your dna so you know that's your genetics so the dna has the the code the information for which amino acids you're going to get. You get this one, then you get that one, lysine, then tryptophan, then whatever. Right? So um, that's what DNA is. So we haven't gone into it yet, but in your cell, in the middle of your cell, you have like a nucleus, and inside that nucleus is your DNA. That's your genetics. That's the building code for how to make every protein in your body. And by making those proteins, that makes you. So, um, DNA looks, I got any better picture. All right, let's look at this DNA from, well, uh, not that one. I really don't have any good choices, do I? Uh, blah, 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 blah. Okay, fine. DNA, I think I was telling you last class that is like a ladder. So, there's the part of the ladder that's kind of like um, vertical. And then there's the parts that you step on to climb up the ladder, right? The vertical part of the ladder, we call that the backbone. The backbone is made from sugar and a phosphate, right? So um, sugar, phosphate, sugar, phosphate, sugar, like that. Like this is the part of the ladder, the, the yellow and the green. 
that's a part of the ladder that's like the vertical part, right? And then these, um, no, I got it reversed. Yellow, canary yellow and green is the vertical part of the ladder. The goldenrod is, um, that's the base. That's the part that you're going to like step up and walk up, right? That's different. So the yellow and the green here, like this dot in this pentagon thing, that just sugar phosphate, sugar phosphate. It just repeats itself, and that's just the backbone. That's not the important part of the molecule. The important part is these bases, and there's four different bases, and they're right here. Um, and you, I, you do not need to know these for this test, but here they are, right? So cytosine, thymine, forget about uracil right now. Cytosine, thymine, adenine, guanine. There's four different ones. So if you look at this, this is half of the ladder. Here's the vertical part. And then here's half of the part that you step on. So it's half a ladder. So imagine you take this thing and there's another one next to it. There's like a reflection, another one, right? So that would make the ladder. That's what this is. See this blue, this solid blue strip here? That's sugar phosphate, sugar phosphate, sugar phosphate. You know, the important part is the bases. So see how I hear it saying A, C, C, T, C, whatever, right? That, that's the part, that's the code for the amino acids in your body. So when my body reads A, C, C, it knows to get one of the amino acids. Then it's going to read T, C, T. Then it knows to get another one. T, C, T. It gets another one. Same one, right? T, T, C. It gets a different one. And it just keeps going like that. It just finds every three amino acids codes. I'm screwing this up. Every three bases codes for an amino acid. All right, let me get back to testable stuff. DNA, RNA are made from nucleic acids. Nucleic acids are made from nucleotides. So your DNA is nucleic acids. For example, DNA stands for deoxyribose. See this word down here, deoxyribose. Nucleic acid, that's the N-A, All right? So um, let me let someone in. Hello. Okay. Back. So the takeaway, DNA, RNA, they are types of nucleic acids. Nucleic acids are made from nucleotides. Nucleotides contain a sugar, I don't care what type of sugar, sugar, a phosphate group, and a base. The base will determine what type of amino acid your body uses to make a protein. That's what I want you to know. I don't even care about RNA right now. We could, that's, we'll talk about that later. Can you repeat that for me one more time? I just got on here. Yeah, it's okay, because I, I was confusing them before you got on, so they, they want me to repeat it. Nucleic acids, which examples of which are DNA and RNA, they're made from nucleotides. So that's right here what I'm underlining. Nucleotide has three things in it, sugar, phosphate, and a base. You could say a nitrogenous base or just a base. Those bases are going to determine, see like here's the bases in the DNA. Those bases are going to determine what amino acid you use to build your proteins. So why are you 
not going to get type 2 diabetes because you have certain proteins that are going to keep you from getting it. Or why are you going to get diabetes? You have certain proteins that are going to cause you to get it. Why do you have those proteins? Because you put amino acids in a certain order. Why did your body do that? Because the DNA told it to put it in a certain order. Because it had a, it has your genetics, your DNA, has a certain order of these bases. So it's, it was like coded in you. Go talk to your mom. It's not my fault. Just kidding. Don't do that to your mom. Poor lady. Probably not even her side. Um, yeah, so if you kind of understand that thing, you know, that there's that link between um, um, between nucleic acids, you know, DNA, and how your proteins are made. And that proteins make everything about you, all your characteristics that you have. Why do you get pissed off so easily? Why do you cry all the time or don't cry ever? Probably somewhere within that explanation is proteins. All right. I keep saying proteins, huh? Proteins, proteins, proteins. All right, there. I'm done. All right, so that's the end of that chapter. You notice me pushing proteins a lot. So just, you know, get it out of your head that proteins are um, just muscle and 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 steak right it's it's not just that it's it's everything so that chapter is um that chapter is going to be your quiz on wednesday is there anything because we've got time we've got plenty of time to talk i'm still going to finish this up by like 10 30. Is there anything you want to talk about? Or do you have any questions about that that chapter? I've given this lecture twice. It's only one chapter. There's no reason you cannot get 100, except one reason. You're not going to study, or you're not watching this right now, and you're not going to watch the recorded video even though that's what you said to yourself, I'll just watch the recorded video and you don't watch it and you don't study. Yeah. But other than that, there's no reason why you can't pass. With an so animal. nucleotide has three things in it. The sugar, the blank, the phosphate and yeah. the base. Yes. Thank you. I really make it too hard by talking about it too much. Imagine my kids. They'll just ask me something like simple because they know I know the answer. I'm like, well, let's talk about – no, never mind. That's what they do. I'll look it up. I'm like, no, man. You asked me. Like, let's let's talk about this. This is like a genetics question. This is, No, no, no. Don't worry about it. Like, they, they, like, just give me the answer. You know what he's doing? He's taking a test. So he's yelling at me from the other room. Oh, what's this? Like, oh, let's talk. He doesn't want to talk about it. He he want, he's cheating through me. Man, you're never a prophet in your own land. All right, this is what is this? Metabolism. Oh, you know what? I see that I've got lots of slides that I've written. So let me just go right into that. So that's. That's the good stuff. Hold on. I'm gonna pass this right up. There we go. All right. So, metabolisms, all the stuff that's happening in your body, all the chemical reactions. But we can break all those chemical reactions down into two things you're making something or you're breaking something up. That's what your body's doing. Either you're making something, you're making something or you're breaking something. So, 
making something anabolic, breaking something catabolic. So when we break up stuff, what do we mean? Like food. When you eat food, that's all catabolic. You got to digest that food. Why are you digesting it? Trying to get all the shit out of it. You know, the, well, that's actually a bad word to use. All the, all the goodness out of it. You know, you want the energy from like the carbohydrates and lipids and you want vitamins and min you got to break that food up to get it. Right. And so that's all catabolic. And whenever you break up something, energy gets released. So this, this chapter is really about energy. So whenever you break up a molecule, energy is released. Whenever you build a molecule, when you take glucose plus glucose and put them together to make some other molecule, glucose plus glucose, and I put them together and it makes maltose, that's anabolic. So if I want to make maltose, that's anabolic. If I want to break up maltose and into, into glucose, that's catabolic. That releases energy. When I want to make them, I got to use energy. If I want to grow hair, I've got to use energy because I'm making hair. So I need energy. Where the hell am I going to get that energy from? From my food. So I got to break up that food. And when I break it up, I release energy because that's catabolic. Then I'm going to use that energy to grow more hair or to make more skin. That's anabolic. Or think of anabolic steroids, right? Right. That's to build muscle, right? So anabolic means like building. So I'm definitely going to ask you those two terms. So you, well, not, not this Wednesday, right? But when we take the exam, for sure, I'm going to ask you. So, so let's talk about energy. Um, energy is like this abstract, invisible thing. It's the potential to do work. Um, a lot of this is um, physics, which I don't know anything about except what I'm going to tell you today. So, um, you know, I can't, I don't know. I know I'm as excited about physics as most of you are. But let's talk about, let's talk about energy. Um, Energy is in different states, so you might see the word kinetic. That just means movement. But um, just to simplify it, it's free or it's potential. So I'm going to give you some examples. Oil that's in the ground is potential energy. It's energy, but we can't do anything with it. we got to get it out of the ground. And even when we get it out of, out of the ground, once we put it in the oil barrel, we still can't use it. Right? we got to um, – we have to uh, make it into gasoline. You have to refine it. Now when it's gasoline, that's free energy. Now I can make that work. So, yeah. So that's like an example of potential versus free, right? Um, things that are not – and this – oh, and this, this, this bullet point here, this goes back to this. Things that are less stable – have more energy that's kind of a weird thing but there's energy and instability so if you think about this dam this dam is not stable compared to the river if we just let this water flow through the river that would be much more stable than trying to put it into a dam i mean what if this dam breaks that's gonna suck but look i can use it to generate electricity so there's energy there, right? But it's not stable. Um, it's a political. Uh, it's a political theory as well. I mean, where do you make money? Like, where do you? Where can you go in there and make some big? Create some instability somewhere, and you can make a shitload of money. Sell weapons to both sides. Um, so yeah, there's energy. There's more energy in things that are unstable. Think about a spring. When I compress the spring, or if you take a gun and you like cock it, it's that's not as stable as if you let the hammer, like, let the hammer go back, right? So 
Um, but the energy's there. You've pulled that, you've, you've pulled the hammer back, and now you've got energy stored there. All right. So there's more energy and instability. And then there's two laws that I want you to know about. And I do want you to know them. And I didn't give you the exact definitions of them. I gave you like the paraphrase of them, but you need to know it. And they're not difficult ideas. Look, the first law of thermodynamics. Energy is not created. It's not destroyed. It's just transferred around. So let's see how much battery I have on my 51%. I'm good. So I just checked the battery in my computer, right? That's energy that's in my laptop. Where was it before? That was transferred from the wall. I plugged it in and the electricity went from the house to the, um, to the laptop. Before that, it was at Entergy. Um, and um, Entergy got it from, I don't know if it's nuclear or if it's oil. Let's just say oil, right? They got it from burning diesel fuel and running the, the generators. So the energy that was in my computer used to be at the energy plant and it used to be in oil. And that oil used to be in the ground because that was dead dinosaurs. So the energy powering my computer used to be in dead dinosaurs. And those dinosaurs, um, at least from my understanding of Jurassic Park, ate other dinosaurs and humans if possible. And those other dinosaurs ate, I don't know what they ate, crickets. And those crickets ate plants. And the plants got the energy from the sun. All right, so that was like a long explanation, right? But the energy that's in my computer, that's powering my computer, came from the sun. It's just transferred from the sun to a cricket, to a human, to a dinosaur, to whatever, to oil to the energy plant, then to my battery and my computer. And where is it going now? I don't know. That's for physics, right? They have an answer to that. I don't know where it goes. But energy is not created. It's not destroyed. It's transferred. Second law of thermodynamics is um, every time you make that transfer, like when I go from dinosaur to oil to energy, I'm losing some of that energy. You lose every time you transfer it from one thing to another. When you take electricity and charge your cell phone, you're losing some of that energy. Um, only about 25% of gasoline actually makes your car drive and makes your radio work and, you know, whatever else it's supposed to do. The rest of it is lost as heat. It's, it's, uh, it's, you know, it's, it's burned from your engine. Your engine's hot, and all that heat is just going into the world. I don't know where. But only 25% of that gasoline is actually making your car drive. Pissing away all that money. It's like $3 a gallon now. So what? Um, 60, 85 cents? is actually making your car go <laughs> like the other the other 215 $2.15 a gallon you're just losing it it's just coming off as heat from your engine what a waste you're a wasteful person driving around but that's the second law of thermodynamics there's always a loss when you transfer energy this is the types of energy we get from our foods these words look familiar. Carbs, proteins, lipids. I keep pushing these words. They are energy sources, but they are like foreign currency. They're Mexican pesos and Canadian dollars and euros. I mean, money's money, right? But you can't take Canadian dollars and spend it here. Um, I bet the corner stores would take it though. If you, I bet, I bet corner stores would say, look, give me twice the amount and I'll take the, they do shit like that. Anyway, um, 
you can't spend that money, right? You got to convert all that money into dollars. So dollars is a molecule we call ATP. The only exception to this is your brain. Your brain uses carbohydrates. Your brain uses glucose. That's its energy source. But everything else in your body pretty much, like me going like this with my hands and me talking, I'm using ATP. I got the ATP from carbs, lipids, proteins. Not so much proteins, really proteins. When I eat a steak, I want to use that protein to make more antibodies and hair and um, whatever, right? But I'll use a little bit of it for energy too. But carbs and lipids, yeah, energy. I'm using that to make ATP. So ATP, I'm calling it the energy currency of the body, right? They all need to be converted into ATP. We have a whole chapter that's not this week, not next week, but we have a whole chapter that's just on how we make ATP. This is what it looks like. Don't get hung up on like the shapes of these things. I mean, you could look at this one here if it makes you feel better. What I wanted to show you is, well, look, it kind of looks, it looks a little bit like a nucleic acid. Look, sugar, phosphate, base. But anyway, the important thing here is that ATP looks like this. And, and forget about this part on the right. Look at the part on the left, the three phosphate groups. That's the important part. That's the part that's changing. So this whole... This whole molecule is called ATP, adenosine triphosphate. So tri meaning three, phosphate means phosphate. It's got three phosphate groups. So that's, you know, these are the three phosphate groups. So I'm just going to look at the, show you the one down here. Triphosphate, meaning three phosphates. That's the important part of this word, right? So this phosphate has no problem being attached to this molecule. This phosphate in the middle doesn't really want to be attached, but it's okay. This phosphate at the end really has a hard time being attached to this molecule. I saw a slide that kind of talked about this. Maybe I didn't. No, I guess I didn't. All right, well, what I was thinking of is You know those, um, you know what, just forget about it. So this last phosphate out here, there's a lot of energy being used to hold this last phosphate on to the rest of this molecule. In fact, it doesn't stay on, it breaks off. So that's what's, that's what's happened here. This third phosphate, this one here, broke off of the rest of the molecule. And there it is. They've got a little I next to it. That's not really important, but you know, it's okay. It's an inorganic phosphate, whatever. But there's the third phosphate. That third phosphate is going to break off of the molecule and it's going to go touch things and give energy to things. So this, this little P here, when it breaks off, it's going to touch my hair follicle. And when it touches my hair follicle, I'm going to start growing hair. When it touches my muscle, it makes my muscle contract. So everything that I'm doing, I'm talking right now because I've got like two sets of mus muscles called ar arytenoids in my larynx. And they're, they're like contracting like this and they're pushing my voice box like, like that, right? Why are those muscles contracting? Because this P went and touched them. We call, we call that, would have been nice if I wrote the word down. We call that phosphorylate. And that's a shitty word. Phosphorylate. That little P phosphorylated my muscle to make me talk or to make my hands go like this or to make me drink coffee or grow, grow hair or whatever it is, make a hormone. Whatever it is I, I, I need to do, that P that used to be on ATP, it broke off and it touched it. What about the, the ATP? It's one of the P's broke off, right? So we don't call it triphosphate. We call it dye. 
because there's only two ATP. I mean, there's only two phosphates, not three. So it's not adenosine triphosphate. It's adenosine diphosphate, or we just call it ADP. So that P is going to go touch things and like give energy to it, and then it's going to sit around. And this ADP is going to sit around. They're waiting to be reunited together. But if I want to reunite them together, let's say I want to take this P and I want to put it back onto this. I need energy to do that. So I got to eat some food. And when I eat food, I'm going to take the energy from my food and I'm going to put this P back on to make ATP. And then when I want to use the energy, I'm going to break the ATP up. And the P is going to go, this P is going to go touch things and give it energy. And then I got to eat more food because I got to put them back together again. So it's like a reversible process. You're breaking up ATP and you're putting together ATP. So it's like this. ATP breaks up into ADP plus P. Don't worry about the I. ATP breaks up into adenosine diphosphate, ADP plus P. That P is going to give energy to things. Then when I eat more food, I'm going to put these two back together and I'm going to make ATP. So that's just, that just keeps happening. You're making ATP, you're breaking up ATP all day long. So when your blood sugar gets low, why did it get low? Well, because you haven't eaten. Okay, fine, but like you are eating. Where did that blood sugar go to while you weren't eating? It was going inside of your cells. And then your cells were taking that blood sugar and using it to make more ATP. That's why your blood sugar got low. That's why your body's telling you you're hungry because you, you used up all the AT, you used up all the glucose from your blood to make more ATP. You took the energy from the glucose and you put these two together inside of your cell. So that's a. So what was the takeaway from this for your exam next week? ATP plus P. Well, you know what? I'm going to. No, I'm not going to write it on the board because I've got a video on this and I don't want to like give you more information. Um, we'll go over this again. I don't want to give you more information. I've got one more thing I want to talk about. I don't know why I have, oh, I know why I have this. The last thing I want to talk about is an enzyme. Enzymes, there's a technical definition and there's a practical definition. Technically, enzymes speed up chemical reactions. So anything that's catabolic or anything that's anabolic needs an enzyme like enzymes speed them up when i want to make hair i need an enzyme to make hair when i want to break down proteins i need an enzyme to break down proteins so anything you're going to do you need an enzyme to do it enzymes speed up reactions so technically they were going to happen anyway it's just the enzyme makes it a lot faster but you know the how much faster it makes it is is dramatic. So um, I'll give you an example. There is an there is a um, when you break up starch, there is an enzyme that does it called uh, amylase. Amylase breaks up starch. It does it in about two minutes. So this amylase is in your spit. We've got an we've got a lab on this. The amylase the enzyme that breaks up starch, it's in your spit. So when you put the piece of bread in your mouth, the, the amylase starts breaking it up right away. Without this enzyme, would your body break up that bread? Yes. It would take two years, though. It, I mean, you don't have two years, do you? No. Um, so um, you don't have two years, right? So. Practically speaking, without amylase, you're not going to break up 
bread. Like you can't break up starch. You're going to eat the potatoes. You're going to swallow it and you're going to poo out the potatoes. Right? You're not going to break it up. So practically speaking, enzymes make things happen. A lot of medications are based on enzymes. Like if you block enzymes, um, you can do certain things. Or if you can increase enzymes, you can do other things. So messing with enzymes is a way to manipulate your body, right? So technically speaking, if you take like the HESI or some kind of test to get into nursing school, enzymes speed up chemical reactions. We call it a catalyst, right? But practically speaking, amongst friends, um, enzymes make things happen. They speed it up so fast that without the enzyme, it's never going to happen. So um, a substrate is the thing that the enzyme works on. For example, here's an enzyme called, and it's represented by this purple blob, because enzymes are proteins, but sucrase. How do I know this is an, well, I know it's an enzyme because it's got the word enzyme, but Here's like another clue. It ends with ASE. If a word ends with ASE, it's probably an enzyme. And so sucrase breaks up sucrose. So remember, sucrose is a disaccharide. It's made from two different, it's made from glucose and fructose. So one of these is glucose, one of these is fructose, and this purple enzyme, sucrase, it breaks them apart. See, here they are. That's all it does. It goes to one, it go, that's its job. That's the only thing it does. Sucrase goes around to all the sucrose in your body. So when you put sugar in your coffee, sucrase is going to come and break up glucose and fructose. It's going to break it up. Then it's going to find another sugar molecule, break it up, another one, break it up. That's, that's all it does. All right. So, the substrate in this case is sucrose. And the enzyme is sucrase, like the names are kind of similar in this case. All right, how are we with time? 1019, I think I'm done with this chapter. Um, does anyone have any questions on that chapter? I should have separated these two lectures out. I'm gonna close this up. And you're all ready to end, huh? I don't blame you. All right, let me stop presenting. So before I stop recording, um, this Wednesday in class, we'll start at 9. I, I think, I mean, I know it's only a half hour difference, but 8.30 seems like difficult for all of us. Um, nine's a little bit easier, so I'll send out an announcement, but let's do nine o'clock. Um, quiz two, just on macromolecules. That's the only notes that you're going to be able to access under modules, right? I'm purposely not going to put anything else there. We've got one chapter to study. That's it. Go to modules. I've got a video and I've got a PDF file. And I'll have this lecture from today. It's like three different ways to give you the same chapter. Carbohydrates, proteins, lipids, nucleic acids. That's it. There's no reason. I mean, do it for me because I want all hundreds. I just look at the paper. Okay, 100, 100, and I can knock this thing out in like 10 minutes. So you're not going to do it for yourself. Get 100 for me. Do right, you have any questions? Anyone? I'm going to stop recording. That's it. Um